objective for Union Station was to elevate the railroad tracks over Douglas Street. At the time, it was creating a lot of congestion. Uh, there, it was a safety factor involved. Um, a lot of the more prominent Wichita citizens lived in College Hill, so they had to cross all of these at-grade railroad crossings to get to their homes. There were several depots in town, and if you were to go from one train to another railroad, you would have to go to a different depot. So the spirit of a Union Station, and a lot of the major cities were starting to get those around that early 1900s, is to consolidate all of them into one building and then you could transfer to another, not unlike a modern airport, if you were to switch from one airline to the other. Lewis Curtis is the architect. He's a Kansas City-based architect. And he was a, for its time, very contemporary architect that did a lot of work with various railroads, including the Santa Fe, and the Frisco. Two of those two, two railroads were tenants in this building as well. And the Santa Fe oversaw a lot of the design uh, and uh, a lot of the uh, construction of this and the planning of this as the ma major railroad that participated in this. A lot of the interior design style was uh, based upon their standards through their uh, Fred Harvey buildings. Uh, Mary Coulter was the interior designer at the time. It uh, was very Southwest influenced in, in her approach um, and kind of did her representation of Native American styles of the Southwest. And a lot of those colors and forms were expressed in the interior design of a lot of Santa Fe Railroad buildings. And that w was influenced here a little bit, but mostly this was Lewis Curtis's design. Um, the main facade that you see out here facing Douglas is a Beaux-Arts style. Beaux-Arts style was very popular. The difference with this building and Lewis Curtis' approach is he made the main entry this Beaux-Arts style out in the front, the main facade. But as you explore the building, as you move from the uh, north to the south, you'll see a lot more of a prairie style influence. Some have referred it to uh, maybe some Art Nouveau influences. It was very eclectic, uh, but he wanted this building to be full of natural light. So some journalists at the time during its grand opening referred to this as the daylight station of America. It's very unique. It's, it's not as large as some of these other cities, but it is grand and distinct because of that. It, it, it's um, a play of mass and void with a lot of concrete and terracotta forms and then a lot of glass.